Hello and welcome to my October review video. I have a dog now. Say hi Huxley. Hello. Isn't he the cutest thing you've ever seen? <laughs> I cannot believe that last month I was like, this probably won't affect how much I can read. Um, yeah, I can't lie in bed for like an hour each day <laughs> anymore um, just reading because I have to be up for this little one. Uh, but it's definitely worth it. He's a miniature schnauzer and he's 10 weeks old. And today is the first day we got to go outside, wasn't it, Hux? Um, which he did very well, even though it was scary. Um, but yeah, he's very cute. He's definitely in a bitey phase <laughs> where he just bites things a lot. Right now he's being quite nice though. Let me know if you'd like Huxley to be in all my videos because I think I can make that work. I'm gonna put you down now so I can talk about books. Is that okay? Yes. <laughs> Oh, I love him so much. Okay, now he's just on my lap looking really cute. He might pop up every now and then. Um, I'm also in a new location because I've got a proper desk there now because of the old working from home stuff. I could actually dissemble it for these videos. That was my plan, but I am too lazy to do that today. Despite not having much time to read this month, I did complete two books and I kind of read some amount of five books. So I'm gonna talk about all of them. The first is Trick Mirror by Gia Tolentino. Um, I mentioned this in my last book haul. It is a book of essays. There are nine essays in here. I read four at the start of the month and I haven't found time to approach the rest, but I'm about halfway through. Um, definitely a kind of like nightstand book. They're personal essays about the growth of the internet, social media, reality TV, feminism. I think this book was written for probably a very slim portion of the population, which are tech savvy, um, young cosmopolitan types. Um, so it suits me to a T that I do think that this is probably a book that not that many people would enjoy. It's very sharp, it's quite intellectual, um, it's very critical, but it was also kind of like deeply embedded into the kind of like millennial internet culture. It actually really reminded me of um, a module I did at uni on like critical theory, um, specifically around kind of like networks and internet. I don't know, I talked a lot about media theorists and the rhizome and stuff. And it was a really dry module for me. I mean, I'm not really one for writing anyway, ironically, um, but uh, I really felt like the lecturers, although they were like obviously very cerebral and had all these concepts in their head and like knew all the people that like talked about this at conferences and stuff, I really felt like they didn't actually know what they were talking about. Like they didn't really use the internet in any way. And Gia Tolentino is definitely like one of us, um, but it's just, thinking about it more. Also, I think I said in my book haul that I didn't know Gia Tolentino was and never heard any of her work. And then I re-listened to an old Reply All episode, uh, which is a podcast about the internet by Gimlet Media, um, which is about Bitcoin hunting. And like, it was her Bitcoin. She was the one that brought it um, to the podcast for them to investigate. Um, so I had heard her talk before and I really liked that episode. I'll link that down below as well. I'm not in that much of a rush to read the rest of it. I might not even do it this month, but I do recommend this a lot. The next book I read, I listened to while I was doing puzzles, which was Lock In by John Scalzi. This came out in 2014 and um, yeah, it's pandemic fiction. I just really felt like going deep into pandemic thinking again. In this book, most of the world has been affected by this disease that starts off as just like a little bit of a flu. If you get the second wave of it, it turns into meningitis. And if you get the third wave of it, you experience lock-in syndrome, which is where your brain is perfectly active, but your body cannot do anything. This is something that does actually happen to a very small amount of people in extreme circumstances in reality. But in this book, 1% of people that have gotten this disease end up with lock-in, or as it's called in the book, Hayden syndrome, which is named after the first lady that got it. There's a lot of money thrown at the disease and how to make life better for people that have been locked in. And the solution are these things called threeps, which are like humanoid robot things um, that people who have lock-in can control with their brain. So they basically get to like be in another kind of body, um, for want of a better word. The story follows this guy called Chris Shane, who is a Hayden, so he is in like a mechanical body and actually locked in somewhere else, um, who is a rookie FBI agent investigating the murder of someone at the hands of an integrator, which are humans that can let Haydens uh, use their body. So instead of the Hayden using a 
machine that's like a humanoid robot they can use actual other humans um and obviously it's not like the person whose body is fault that the person inside of them murdered someone but there begins this fun cop mystery and i'll give you a bit of a spoiler it goes all the way to the top i thought it was a really fun read but one thing that annoyed me so much is that the leading man is such a leading man like it's 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 like a second day on the job as an agent and he knows how to do everything really well and is really efficient and like such a man about everything i've never read any of john scalzi's other books uh but i know that a lot of people on booktube like him um, so uh, please tell me what I should read next of his because um, yeah I liked his writing it was fun I now don't have power over my right hand because it is being used by the puppy <laughs> the next book I read which was my book club pick for the month was The Hundred Year Old Man Who Climbed Out the Window and Disappeared by Jonas Jonasson um, this came out in 2009 and it is a comedic novel about a centurion who sort of escapes from an old people's home um, goes on a bit of a rampage, accidentally kills some like mob people, um, ends up with like a very motley crew and a lot <laughs> who have like stolen a lot of money. It's a very silly story, um, but it's kind of interweaved between that narrative, which I think is probably about a third of the book, um, and the rest of it is the history of this man, Alan Carlson. Alan is completely apolitical and yet somehow has managed to get himself into these situations where he has met and charmed like all of the world leaders in the 1900s. <laughs> King Jong-il, Stalin, Mao, multiple US presidents, General Franco, um, like he's just had a very odd life going to a lot of places. Um, he's a, a munitions expert so he blows things up and that just takes Tim to a lot of places. He goes on a lot of adventures and it's very, very silly and fun. But it's also, I really liked the historical aspect of it. In our book club, we were talking about how the bits set in China around the kind of like Mao stuff, we didn't like as much. And I think that's because that was the bit of history that I actually have the least context of. All of the other parts of history, I'd like learned about them in school or um, read books that kind of featured them but yeah I have a real gap in my knowledge for for like communist China um so that was interesting I think if you're a history buff um you'd find it extra entertaining but if you don't know anything about history in the 1900s this isn't really gonna teach you it because it's all it's like slightly fictionalized but it's kind of like historical fiction easter eggs for me satire and this kind this kind of comedy is sort of an exercise in suspending my beliefs because um, although I can recognise it's all very silly and unrealistic, you just kind of have to go with it. Like part of me is like, but that's not how the way the world works, um, which is just quite a, an annoying thing to have to deal with when reading because I wish I could just like take it at face value and enjoy it. But I had a similar thing with um, uh, A Confederacy of Dunces by John Kennedy Tool, where it was very, it's very heavy satire. Um, and for most of the book I just spent it being really annoyed at this character and how outrageous he was and by the end I was like this is amazing um, but it just took I had to work through so much frustration to get there um, do you have a similar thing like let me know if you have the same kind of issue with comedy satire um, books and any like how you get over it basically um, because I'd like to read more of these kind of books this is unlike any book I've ever read really and that's sort of our book club is we do read some classics and we like to have a blend of fiction and non-fiction but really like our goal is to stretch ourselves and just just have a really really broad range of of topics and this definitely falls into the broad range but it was fun I think it's a bit of a cult classic it's one of those ones that quite a lot of people have just like randomly read or heard of um and also I think I'm gonna give it to my dad I'm trying to get my dad into um real literature as opposed to that uh, airport fiction stuff he kind of usually reads. It's a very easy one to stand by that someone will enjoy if you give it to them. Maybe a good Christmas idea. Other things I have been reading this month. I started reading Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat by Samin Nosrat. I literally am I'm only a few pages in. Like I've, I'm, I'm, I feel pretty down with salt and it's already massively changed how I think about cooking. I think I was, I think I, I think I got salt before but now I like get salt um, and it's just fantastic. I bought this for my boyfriend for Christmas two years ago and he hasn't read it, uh, but I mean, 
all the better for me because I wanted it. Um, I actually was put onto that because of a podcast. So Samin Nosrat um, does a podcast with Rishikesh Herway, who does the Song Exploder podcast called Home Cooking, which is kind of like a Q&A show about cooking where they just chat about what they've been cooking and stuff. And it is so wonderful. I cannot recommend this podcast enough. They're old friends and they clearly really enjoy each other's company. Um, but there's just something about the way Samin talks about food as being so like nourishing and exciting and experimental. And when she's suggesting to someone like what they could um, do with whatever ingredients they have, she's like, oh, you could, oh, you could toast it up with some things and just like sprinkle a bit of that on it and pour some olive oil. It's gonna be crispy and crunchy and just delicious. And just the way she describes food is just fantastic. And it's made me want to be a lot more kind of experimental with my cooking. I think I'm very experimental with like herbs and spices like you can definitely throw a meal together um, but there are definitely a lot of ingredients or like cooking methods that I just wouldn't really approach so um, looking forward to like slowly absorbing the rest of that book and just doing some some more different cooking. The final book I want to talk about is The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. Um, I was solving some puzzles and I was like it's time for another epic fantasy. So this is book one of the Stormlight Archive uh, which is one of his trilogies in the Cosmere universe and this first book is 45 hours long as an audiobook which is about four times the length of a normal, normal audiobook. Um, I'm about halfway through it now and it's just great. I knew I knew it was going to be great. He's a very well-renowned uh, fantasy author and um, I just knew it was going to be like magnificently kind of orchestrated all of these different characters and plots coming together um, but it's also just fun and interesting and don't really have much more to say oh the dog wants to leave should I put you on the floor put you on the floor he's resting happily on my lap again now <laughs> um right I don't think I have much more to say about the way of kings in terms of its construction or its plot or whatever um, but I'm enjoying it. I might do like a series review once I've read all of them because it's just you kind of have to just go deep with those kind of epic fantasies. I've listened to one other Brandon Sanderson book before and now I can't remember what it's called. Oathbringer? Warbearer? Something along those lines. Uh, um, and I specifically listened to that because it was a standalone and I wasn't ready to like commit to a big series. Uh, but now, you know, I'm ready. I've got a dog now. I can I can take on the responsibility. Let me know if you are into the Cosmere and your favourite books from it. Because um, I don't know if I might just end things at this trilogy or I don't, I don't know. There's so much content and I'm not sure I want to spend the next like six months reading them. All right, and that is all of my books for this month. Thanks for joining me. Sorry it's a bit late and a bit short and a bit rushed and not much content, but I mean, look at him, look at him. Would you read books when you had this little boy around? He's being very sleepy and good now, which is very nice. I don't want to put him down. See you next month. Bye. Bye bye. Say bye. Bye.